here in sunny Oslo. That didn't go as planned. It's about the size of my head. <laughs> Who doesn't love a grilled cheese? And it's freshly fried. This might be the favorite thing that I've had to eat here in Oslo. And of course we like it spicy. I think we need to cut this. Hi, I'm Zoe. And I'm Simon. And since our first trip together over a decade ago, we've taken every opportunity we can get to travel, explore new countries and try new food. In this video we escape rainy Hamburg for a city trip to Oslo and deep dive into the city's street food and attractions. And after a short flight and a train ride to the city center, we arrived in our Airbnb. The apartment is really, really cute. It's very stylish and most importantly, it's right in the city center. So we're ready to explore. If you want to charge your phone, you can just use the handy socket up here. <laughs> <laughs> So we arrived in Oslo about an hour ago and we are very hungry. First up, we're not going to try a classic Norwegian kind of street food, but we heard that there's a restaurant here that serves some excellent grilled cheese sandwiches. Founded by two guys that used to work in Michelin star kitchens all over the world. And now they're here in Oslo doing what they like best, which is apparently grilled cheese sandwiches. Um, and so, of course, we have to try them. I mean, who doesn't love a grilled cheese? This is the classic grilled cheese sandwich and it has cheddar on it as well as some ham and mustard. And you can really see the mustard seeds. It's a, more of a sweet mustard. It's really nice. It really does not taste healthy, but it tastes good. <laughs> so at Melt they do all kinds of different variations of the classic grilled cheese. And one of them that tickled our fancy was the uh, Korean pulled pork one. I really like the spicy cabbage here. It goes really well with the pulled pork. I think I like the Korean spicy grilled cheese even more than the original one. Mm. I also like this better. So if you come to Melt, get the Korean pulled pork. It's really good. We just went to my ugly baby because we really needed some coffee and also they have these nice quite big donuts it's about the size of my head <laughs> and we're gonna try this pretty much the perfect thing to eat right after a, <laughs> a really fatty and quite large grilled cheese sandwich yeah i think we'll try try to do better tomorrow you don't really seem to like it at all I'm thinking. <laughs> Let me check again. The donut itself, like the dough, tastes really fresh, but also a bit yeasty for me. I don't like it when you can taste the yeast in the dough. You want to try it? Yep, of course. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but you like everything. <laughs> Not everything. Everything sugary. That's true. No, but is it is it special? I don't think it's that special. It's just like a normal donut. It's true, it isn't that special. It's a quite good donut and the glazing is decent. Coffee is good though. We were at Gamle Oslo now and it's very beautiful. And you can sit here by the water, drink some beer. I think the uh, sugar and caffeine <laughs> crash is slowly setting in. Or well, not really slowly, more like a bomb. You can think I can have a little nap here. Um, see. Yeah, there are worse places. <laughs> but I think now we've got a bigger task ahead of us. Yeah, so behind us is the famous Oslo Opera House and you can walk to the top and enjoy some nice views. Nice upper walk. <laughs> and downhill again. <laughs> I think we're here at the perfect time, right before sundown, uh, to catch a nice glimpse over the whole city. It feels a bit futuristic. Walking it does, here. yeah. Because everything's so white. Everything's and so you white. Can see quite, I mean, it's like big, flat areas. It's I don't a bit know how like to we are walking in the Matrix in some weirdly designed level where everything is white and clinical.
from up here you can also see Opera Beach which is a very tiny beach but you can lie down there and have a swim so we might have a beach day tomorrow just kidding it's gonna rain and it's gonna be like 12 degrees Celsius so so here in the middle of the industrial area is Vipa and there's supposed to be very good food here and nice vibes looking out onto the water looking at the sailboats and also the nearby islands not that hungry i must say but maybe <laughs> yeah. we will have a drink before and then yeah get something healthy maybe <laughs> let's see okay change of plans um Vipa is a cool place to hang out and chill but we're just not hungry yet. We had a drink and uh, enjoyed the view, but I think we we're gonna look for, yeah, some maybe more lighter options elsewhere. Um, and I must say, we also had a quick look at the Oslo street food, yeah, uh, which is also a food market in Oslo. And I think I like the options better there, yeah. the food options. And the vibe was also a little bit cooler, although you didn't have the view, of course. Yes, but it was much fuller. Yeah. And you just go from, from food stall to food stall and you think, oh, I want that, oh no, I want that, oh, that <laughs> looks even better. And that was not the case at Vipa, for me at least. Yeah. So I guess we'll be giving the Oslo street food another visit. walked until we got hungry and we landed at Oslo Street and I've got Okonomiyaki. It looks really good. So yesterday we ended up going to Oslo Street Food and I think we made the right choice. For today we've still got a lot of food places on our list and so it's time to head into not that sunny Oslo um, but we're gonna make the best out of it. We got our first coffee of the day at Equals Cafe and we've learned that it's a very interesting concept. Most employees there are former drug addicts and they've kind of been helped to get back on their way. So if you're in Oslo, definitely come to Equals Cafe and support them because it's a really cool story behind it. So we're now on our way to Grüne Lokka, which is the more hip and alternative area here in Oslo. And it's supposed to be full of cool eateries and boutique shops and art galleries. And there's also another food court in Grüne Lokka, which is called Matthallen. And we're gonna go there now, see if it can hold up to Oslo street food where we were yesterday. Because yeah, Norwegians seem to love their food courts and we definitely also do. We made it to Mattheim and it's just started to rain so that's perfect timing. Let's quickly go inside. So the food looks very good here but I'm only sticking to healthy options today as planned. <laughs> Got to do the right thing. And what's that? Uh, uh, looks like a pulled duck sandwich to me. It is. It's with a pulled duck confit. Um, I think more of a French thing, but it's cooked in its own fat for quite a while. And then it's together with a little bit of rucola and a mustard sauce on a baguette. And it makes for a very good sandwich. And I've gone for some dumplings. It's slightly raining. It's all good though. We're having a nice walk. <laughs> Here to Grünalaka. So one thing Germans and Norwegians have in common is that they both love a good sausage. And this place here in the background is one of Oslo's legendary hot dog institutions. It's been serving hot dogs for over 40 years. They serve their special kind of hot dog here all over in Norway, which is served in a potato pancake. So we have two hot dogs here, which are called polse, and then the lompe is the potato pancake here. And 
we randomly got one with only the potato pancake and one with bread and the potato pancake. I think you can have it both ways. And we also have some jalapenos on here because he liked it, we wanted spicy and of course we like it spicy. And then also I think some spicy ketchup and mustard of course. I think I'm gonna go for the classic polsa with lumpe at first. I read online that they cook their sausages in a very special broth and they use Vina, so Viennese sausages um, yes. and how is it? It's a very good sausage and it's very crisp and tasty and the jalapenos give it a nice spicy twist. The lompe, the potato pancake, almost tastes like a tortilla because it's so thin. Um, but it's a nice variation of a hot dog, I'd say. And this is the combo hot dog. So it is in a hot dog bun and also with a pancake. Looks very juicy. This is gonna be a big bite. <laughs> I think we need to cut this. Probably one of the cheapest snacks that you can find here in Oslo. And also a very tasty one at that. Just a bit noisy. <laughs> so are the... So next up, we'll try Norway's favorite dessert and with it, Norway's special kind of cheese called Brunost. And what makes Brunost so special is that it's produced by heating up the whey in the cheese making process so that it caramelizes. This might be the favorite thing that I've had to eat here in Oslo. I ordered the super classic combo waffle with the brunost and some jam and cream and it's a excellent combination. And the brunost is, this is the first time I've tried it and I really really like it because it's got a really deep and rich flavor but then also it's very sweet and it's a bit surprising at first but actually it goes perfectly with this combination. and. I could eat this all day. I went for a passion fruit ice cream with a smooth ring on top, which is a donut, and it's freshly fried. Mmm. It was really good. The smooth ring is kind of a mix between a donut and a cake, I think, because the dough is more cakey than with the traditional like American donut. The waffle is also very good. It has some hints of cardamom in it, and it's quite sugary and just very tasty, which is not that surprising maybe for a waffle place. So if you like coffee, then you've maybe heard of Tim Wendelbo. He's a multiple barista world champion and this is his coffee shop and also coffee roastery here in Oslo. And it's a basically a mecca for people who love really good coffee. Let's go inside. for the anisetta, which is a mix of espresso and star anise. And I do smell the star anise a little bit, but it's just a slight touch, which is also very nice. And a little bit of milk is in it as well, so it's quite strong, and I like that. So here you can choose from a whole menu. I went for this one. What are the notes? <laughs> well, it's an Ethiopian coffee and um, it's a little bit floral with some stone fruit flavors in there as well. I like it. Grünerlocker is really worth a visit. Besides these rougher industrial streets, we also have a lot of really nice streets with nice looking houses and a lot of cafes and bars. You can just wander around for a long time, even in the rain. Even in the rain it's fun. Yeah.